Welcome back for the second lesson in using Voltage Modular. In this video, I'm going to teach you all about modulation, which is basically how we can manipulate different synth parameters automatically over time. If you haven't seen the first video in this series, you may wish to watch that first to get familiar with the basics. The video link is in the description. In the previous video, we only created static sounds that, apart from the envelope, didn't change at all over time. However, with modular synthesis, almost any module can be used to modulate parameters on another module. Module, module, module. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. In other words, all these knobs you've been twisting and all those sliders you've been sliding, well, you can use another module to essentially twist your knobs and slide your sliders, which doesn't necessarily sound any better, but we'll go with that. It's essentially how you make things go wub, 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 and woo, 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 and oink, 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 oink. I think you get the idea. Now, you may recognize on the screen uh, the combination of modules here that we had at the end of the last video. You can hear we still have that nice double saw synth set up. Now, there are lots of different ways to modulate sound, but we're going to start with a module we've already discussed, the envelope generator. It makes sense in concept, right? The same thing we've been using to shape the dynamics of a sound can also be used to shape other aspects of the sound, for example, the filter. So currently in the modules list, I have it showing the favorites. Um, if I tried to search for the envelope generator here, it's going to search in the favorites and it's not gonna find it. So I'm going to click on all, and now uh, when I search, it'll search all the modules. Um, now, I'm going to add this a different way than I did in the last video where I dragged it and dropped it into the project. I'm just going to click this add button here and it's going to appear uh, to the right side of the modules that I currently have. Now, I'm going to set this to zero sustain and a medium decay. And before I go any further, just take a minute to think about what effect do you think an envelope would have on a filter? So we already know what it does to dynamics but imagine that same effect on the filter instead, right? So instead of the sound getting louder and softer, it's going to get brighter and mellower as that filter opens and closes. So the setting that I currently have here will start with the filter open, and then it will close down at a medium pace, sounding something like down. I'll also add just a little bit of release so that the filter doesn't slam shut when I let go of the note. And so then of course, we'll need to connect the keyboard gate. So I'm going to show you another little trick. Um, if you click on the keyboard gate where we already have a cable coming out of it, it will expand out and you can drag from one of the empty plugs. Now, I've already shown this to you before. That's not the trick. Let me disconnect this. And then I'm going to drag the cable going in the opposite direction. And it will automatically connect it to one of the expanded ports without me having to do the extra click. Just a little time saver when you're putting a lot of cables together. So when it comes to actually modulating parameters on a module, you will see the word mod on an input with a knob next to it in most cases. So you can see that here, there's two mod inputs for the filter, and you can see there are mod inputs as well on the oscillators in two different places. So for this envelope, we're going to connect it to the filters mod input. We'll just use the first mod input, but there is a second one for additional modulation from another source. Now, since the envelope will only swing the filter cutoff up from its current value, be sure to drop the filter cutoff to the lowest you want it to be at any given point. So that's as mellow as we want it. Next, we adjust the mod amount knob to determine how much the envelope adds to the filter cutoff. And of course, you can get lots of other fun results by playing with the filter envelope settings. I like that wah wah effect. But uh, we're going to set the attack back to zero and get the decay about medium here because I want my sound to go down and not wow. I think most of this video is just going to be me making random sound effects with my mouth. <laughs> Who needs a synthesizer when you have me? That would be a fun studio gig. Like, sir, I'm your synthesizer for today. Bow, bow, bow. 
worst studio musician ever. You know, I feel kind of bad leaving that second filter mod input not used by anything. So we could connect another modulation source, such as keyboard velocity, and this will make it so the harder you hit the keys, the more open the filter is. So I'll just connect it to the keyboard vel, which stands for velocity. Turn up the mod amount. And now watch what happens as I hit the keys at different velocities. So it's pretty cool being able to control the brightness of the sound so directly with the keyboard. Now that I'm only making things brighter, let me drop the filter cutoff down a little bit. Yeah, something like that. So I just created a filter suite by gradually playing harder into the keys and then lighter again. Now with this setup, the note velocity is affecting the cutoff frequency, so the envelope is still adding the same amount to the filter with each key press, but it's starting at a different point. Um, sometimes though, you actually want the keyboard velocity to control how much the envelope affects the sound. With this method, both loud and soft notes will end up at the same filter cutoff point. So we'll have to hook things up a little differently to make that work, but I will show you how to do that. Now, when you think of an amplifier, you usually think of taking an audio signal and making it louder or quieter. However, you can actually use an amplifier with control voltage as well. So we can use an amplifier to make the envelope signal more or less based on the input from the keyboard velocity. Did you follow all that? Uh, I threw a lot at you there, um, but let's just hook it up so you can see how it works. Let's just add an amplifier. Next, instead of the envelope being connected directly to the mod input on the filter, we're going to connect it to the input on the amplifier. Whatever goes into the amplifier input is what is going to be amplified or not. Next, instead of the velocity going straight into the second mod input, we're going to put that into the CV in on the amplifier. Whatever connects to the amplifier CV in can be used to control the amount of amplification. Of course, we need to connect the amplifier output into the filter mod input in order to hear any of this anyway. So let's go ahead and connect that up. I'll need to increase the cutoff a bit. All right, so hopefully you can hear the difference between this method and the previous method that we used. I much prefer doing it this way for synth bass sounds because I actually want the sound to be quite filtered when holding down the note. I'll play a bit with the settings so you can hear the difference between this method and the previous method. Yeah, that makes a pretty nice synth bass sound. If I drop one of the oscillators down an octave, you get a really fat sound. If I change this one to a square wave, and then reduce the pulse width a bit, you get a really nice bass sound out of it. <laughs> now that is a fat, juicy bass. So, um, now I've actually created a sound that I like, and I'd like to save it for future use. Well, fortunately, there is a built-in preset feature in Voltage. Just go up to the Save button, click that, and let's, uh, let's choose a category. I think bass would be an appropriate category for this sound. And then we need to give it a name. Hmm. Something, uh, well, it's, it's a fat bass. And uh, wait, you know what? We can't spell it like that. That's too normal. There we go. Now it's cool.
All right. Uh, it's juicy too. So let's call it fat, juicy, base. Oh, that, that's still too normal. Here we go. Let's throw some Z's in there. Hit save. All right. Now I have my fat, juicy Baz saved and I can use that in my next big hit, which would also be my first big hit. Anyway, now that that's saved, I can play around with the settings. Oh, that sounds so good. I think I'll set it back to the sound I had before. Now I'd like to move on to another form of modulation, one that essentially lets us take a knob and move it up and down repeatedly like this. <laughs> now I need to set that back, I guess. <laughs> of course, there are other knobs that can be virtually wiggled as well. Um, let me disconnect this first oscillator here so we can work with just one for now. Um, if we wiggle this frequency knob here, we'll get a vibrato effect. And if we wiggle the pulse width knob, we get a cool chorusing effect. That'll be easier to hear if I open the filter. That's kind of a cool effect. So instead of doing the wiggle myself, that sounds like a terrible dance move, I can use something called a low frequency oscillator to do the work for me. Now the oscillators we've been using thus far oscillate within the audible range. We're talking, you know, like hundreds to thousands of times a second. But a low frequency oscillator, or LFO for short, oscillates very slowly, which makes it great for creating vibrato and other effects. To do this, we'll need an appropriate oscillator. We could use another of the standard oscillators. You can see it has a low function here, but I'm actually going to use the simple and compact mini LFO, which I will search for and add here. And this gives me two different LFOs on one very small panel. Each LFO has a knob for the oscillation rate and a connection jack for each of two waveform shapes, triangle and square. Usually you'll want the triangle wave. This will adjust a parameter smoothly up and down, whereas the square would be kind of like, you know, fully on, fully off, kind of like imagine a blinking Christmas tree light. We'll use this first LFO to create some vibrato. To do this, connect a cable from the first LFO triangle output to the oscillator's frequency mod input. Then you'll need to increase the mod amount here so that you can actually hear the effect. It doesn't take much to get a vibrato effect. If I turn this up all the way, things get a little bit out of hand. Whoa! Now that vibrato is pretty fast, so let's slow it down by decreasing the rate. And that's a nice vibrato. Next, I'm going to use the second LFO to modulate the pulse width. And this one we will route into the PWM mod jack. Increase the mod amount. Let's turn off the vibrato effect for now. You can see the waveform shape change dynamically on the oscillator. If you get too close to the edge of the pulse shape, it sounds a little weird. Let's get our vibrato effect going again. There's a little Monty on the run. Let's reconnect the first oscillator. And 
and then connect it up to the LFO in the same way the second oscillator is. Give it that really saucy sound. And just because we can, let's add another LFO and make the filter go wub 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 wub. And by now you should have a pretty good idea how to adjust the speed and depth of the effect. Maybe bring the filter down a bit. To really make this preset come alive, let's add our first effect, Stereo Delay. So I'm just gonna search for Delay, and here you can see a Stereo Delay. We're gonna use that because the Stereo Spread will make it sound just even fatter. Disconnect the filter from the output and reconnect that to the input on the Stereo Delay. We can just run this into the left channel since our input is mono. And then we'll connect both the left and the right outputs of the Stereo Delay into the left and right main outputs. So that's the default settings, but we're going to increase the spread, which will make the delay a stereo effect. I'm also going to remove the detuning from the oscillators by setting them to their default value. Now that's a sexy sound. I think we should save it. We'll call it Sexy Pulse Width Modulation Lead. Uh, that's not cool enough. There. That's eh, still not cool enough. Yeah! Misspelled words are cool. <laughs> oh, we should change the category as well, since this is not a bass, this is a lead. Yeah, I love that. Now, let's say you don't want to have the vibrato going all the time, but only when you use the mod wheel on your keyboard. What is a mod wheel, I hear you asking? Well, not every MIDI keyboard has these, but they're super useful. Sometimes they're in the form of a wheel that you can move up and down, and sometimes they're in the form of this little joystick thingy here. Now, perhaps you've never used a mod wheel before, and you're not quite sure what to do with it. <laughs> well, my friend, don't be afraid. It won't bite. Go on, give it a little wiggle. That's right, just a little wiggle. Yeah, you like that, huh? Oh yeah, yeah you do. All right, all right, don't, don't, don't go too crazy there. <laughs> all right, so once you've located the mod wheel on your keyboard, you'll need to add the mod wheel assistant module. Then disconnect the cables connecting the LFO to the frequency mod input on both oscillators and connect the mod wheel CV out into the mod wheel input on the mod wheel assistant. Lastly, connect the mod wheel assistant output into the frequency mod inputs on both oscillators. Set the amount on the mod wheel assistant to full. And now you can hear the vibrato kick in only when I activate the mod wheel. Let's increase the vibrato depth a bit. And maybe a bit slower would be nice. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. 
Let's take it for a test drive. I think that's enough for this video. I haven't decided yet what the next video will cover, but I'm thinking it might be fun to explore some of the other oscillator types, which can provide even more variety to your sound. If you've got ideas for things you'd like to learn about, uh, please leave them in the comments below. And I hope this tutorial enables you to have even more fun in Voltage Modular. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.